just isn't good enough. I've tried ringing her home number, but there's no answer. I can't think where she could be. <laughs> oh! This just isn't good enough. So this is the shot as it was filmed on location at the Rural Media Company. Uh, outside the window is another room and there's an 800 watt redhead lamp we've set up as a fake sun. Notice the gaffer tape where we cracked the window earlier by putting a 2 kilowatt light too close. We didn't set up a blue screen which is the usual way of matting a new background into a shot. So now I'm going to have to pay for that in post-production. And you see I've put these white polygons on top of Amanda, and I can animate the corners of these so they roughly follow her outline um, during the course of the shot. So what I get then is this kind of silhouette which is called an alpha mat, and uh, I'm going to add to that um, an alpha mat for the window, which is just a, a rectangular shape. I can now tell the computer to apply that alpha mat to the original shot, so that the white areas in the mat become opaque, and the black areas become transparent. And this is the shot we filmed out on the hills of Lorna Jane Hamer and John McLaughlin on their piece of cardboard coming down the hill. So now I've repositioned that background shot slightly and just dropped it in behind the original footage of Penny and Amanda. So that's the basic effect done now. Here I've added another layer of Penny and Amanda without the transparency channel, uh, which increases the brightness of the area outside the window, which makes it look more realistic, because if you really did film this shot, then the inside would be a lot darker than the outside. There is a little problem though, which is that you can still clearly see the stand of the redhead outside and the gaffer tape on the window. So I take a still of that and paint the stand and the tape out, and then I can superimpose that over the original shot to give me a new version of the shot without the stand or tape. This is a still taken from another shot in the scene which I'm going to use as a reflection uh, in the window. And here you can see I've done the composite again, adding the reflection in, and with the new shot uh, without the stand and gaffer tape. When Sarah and Cameron actually crash through the window, we're going to be on a slightly different shot. Uh, the basis for that is this plate I filmed of the office window. And I'm going to cut the window itself out using a simple alpha mat. And for Sarah and John, I'm going to have to use the same shot of them coming down the hill again, just the very end where the perspective's right because they're close to the camera. Uh, but I'm going to have to blow that up slightly and reposition it to match the uh, the window plate. You can see when I put these two shots together that uh, the characters appear behind the window throughout the shot so I need to do a bit of cloning and rotoscoping to make them uh, appear to actually come through the window. Okay now this is the fun bit. I set up a piece of glass in my flat surrounded by black covered items, backlit it and chucked an old camcorder battery through it. And once I've composited this on the top the shot is finished. This just isn't good enough. I've tried ringing her home number, but there's no answer. I can't think where she could be.